Hey, how you doing? Um, this is uh Gad with Yap. It's been a while since I've been out here on the podcast, but um, I'm trying to get some stuff started. You guys can see I have a um a different platform, and uh, this is the uh, Riverside platform, and I have my daughter Lavonda as a guest, and it's who we're going to do today, and we're going to talk about different things. How you doing? Good. All right. Okay. And uh, you guys. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, and I know you guys know me and everything like that, but I have uh, five daughters, and um, they're all over the world, all over the United States, so she's in um, Louisiana, and we just got a topic we're going to talk about, and the topic is going to be, it's okay to be different. Now, I'm going to let you start off with that one, Vaughn. What do do you think about um, people that's different and people that um, look at others as different in a negative way. Well, what I mean by different is, it's okay to not do what everybody else is doing. So if a, you you see everybody getting tattoos, like you don't have to do it. If you don't feel like the need to get it or do it, don't do it. Don't do it because everybody else is doing it. You know, choose your own path. And I think that's what's hard for younger people and older people nowadays, because everyone wants to do what everybody else is doing because they no one doesn't want to feel not normal or outcast. They kind of want to fit in or blend in. And a lot of people don't have their own identity. I would say for myself, for example, you know, I felt like I chose a path of kind of being different sometimes when it came to um, just, I guess, my morals and my values. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of was strict. When I, you know, when I was younger, I was like, oh, I don't want to drink. I don't want to smoke. I want to be a pure athlete. You know, that's what, you know, that's where it came from for me. Like, oh, you know, if I want to be the best of myself, then I don't need anything else influencing me. But also I was young. I was uh, naive when it came to like things that were introduced into my life that I didn't understand what it was. You know, when you don't have a lot of experience, you're going to do things that, shows that you don't have a lot of experience and some of those things were that you know I stayed away from the drugs for a very long time you know never you know dibbled and dabbled into it but I see my friends doing it but I just was focused on hey I want to have an athletic path and the best thing I can do to stay focused is to not do it right right and um yeah that's good because you are at a certain age, and uh, are you are you guys considered? What you guys considered? What generate Gen, Gen X or what? I was watching this yesterday. I think they were saying from like eighty three to ninety. I be, some about millennials, but I, I was in the millennial category. I don't remember the exact dates, but I'm in the men, a millennial category. Okay, so just looking at it from a millennial standpoint, you know, um, but so the the kids from like eighteen to twenty three, they like Gen X. What do you think? Is it Gen X or Gen Z? One of them, yeah. Yeah, I, I've heard Gen X or Gen Z. So, you know, that, that's something we'll find out about later. But like you said, being this is being 2024. And, you know, a lot of kids nowadays, even younger than you, it's just, they. it seems like they've been uh, brought up different. You know, and what makes you think that could be different for them? Is it, is it the internet? Is that TikTok thing? Or what? what, what do you think? I think is a a multitude of things. It's not just one thing. It could be how you're raised. It could be what you're susceptible to, what you're around. You know, it can come from your peers, uh, what you see on TV, everything. Everything that comes into your ears can affect you because, you know, entertainment is enter for a reason. We got to know some uh, those words we learned early on, those prefixes and all that stuff. Enter like that stuff is entering you and it does. It transforms how you think you know, and how you see things. Um, so all of those things are a contributing factor. If you have parents that are doing certain things, even though if you say you don't want to, it's going to catch up to you eventually. That's just how life works. Things that you've been raised by, your surroundings, you know, where you grew up, you're going to have some of that in you. Um, so it, it's just a, a bunch of things that can you know, influence somebody. There's so many things that can influence somebody. And it depends on what you're going through at that time in your life. Right, Some, right, you know, right. And, and I get it. I get it because, you know, at the age I am, it's definitely different from 
how you guys grew up and how kids are growing up now. Right. But definitely with us, when I, when I grew up, um, it basically was like, you know, kind of like fend for yourself. Nobody wanted, nobody was calling you at the time. It was like, okay, I, I raised you now. You ready to go out here and do what you got to do. Because I remember when my dad, <laughs> he tried to kick me off the house. You know what I mean? So I was like, you know, hey, what's up with that? But what he was doing was trying to make me a man. But he, the way he went about it as, okay, when you when you turn 21, you're getting out of here, buddy. I'm like, yo, what's up? But he said it when I, when I turned 21. And he called me. He was like, you ready? So I was like, what you talking about? And then my mom stepped in and stuff like that. But it's different now. You know, you might not even get parents to even say anything to you like that. But no. I understood what he was talking about, even though he went about it, maybe. I might not like the way he went about it. But basically, he was pretty much saying, now is the time for you to get your stuff together. You can't always be dependent on your parents. You know, mm-hmm. you have to be get for yourself, be a go-getter, make your own way. And I understood that. I understood that at the time, I may not have understood it, but now I understood it. I understand that as an adult. But like I said, times are different. But I still, me personally, I still think those uh, principles that I had when I was a kid can be incorporated into your child now. You know what I mean? So what do you think about that? I mean, you you have kids, you have kids of yourself. So, you know. Yeah, I think it's gender based too. Everybody always say, "Well, you should treat treat them all equally." What well, ain't equally? Because the, the man goes out there, and you know he is the primary breadwinner majority of the time. I understand the world is changing, but that's how it is traditionally. I, I believe in traditional values where that man is the primary uh, breadwinner, and the woman can do things. It's just they're an additive, not the primary. Right. And, I do believe in um, certain gender roles, I'll say, where you're going to teach your boy something different than your girl. Right. Just because how men view women and then how women view men. Even that is misconstrued that, well, we only should look at that man to give us something. You know, and and then men, on the other hand, you know, they may look at women that, well, they only should be in this box. But um, that's kind of hard. That's a tricky situation. But I, I do believe some of them older values need to exist today, but tweaked. So you need to put your own spin on things. It depends on your child. That's why you got to be always looking at your child. Okay, where am I? Everybody really should know their child. Okay, my child's not strong in this area. Like my mom, she always knew that she couldn't talk to each one of us in the same way. One, give too straight. One, she wouldn't, you know. So she had to tweak it. You do have to tweak it. And as your parental skills grow, you should tweak it. You know, I'm a yeller. Does that work? No, that doesn't really work. So I have to say, if that doesn't work, what do I need to do? So sometimes now with my little ones, I sometimes come down to their level and talk to them, but that's not all the time. I'm still growing as a parent, but it's hard. It ain't easy. Like you said, there is some manuals for parents. They say, oh, you you don't get a manual. You kind of do. The Bible is one of them, and that's the primary manual. And then you have a manual of like memory of what you've seen your parents do. So then you take whatever you're learning, you're reading, what's on the internet, and then you combine it with what fits for your child. Right. And then it changes because a child is different from when they become a toddler than when they become a preteen. And then, so you have to evolve as a parent. You have to become, what's the word, um, a- adaptive. You have to adapt and change with your kid because they're changing. So you have to give them what they need. And sometimes... They want what they want, but you got to give them what they need. Just like how you say your parent had to kick you out at a certain point in time. And, you know, some you some you have to say, hey, if you want to live here, this is what you will do and what you will not do. You do have right. to establish who is, hey, look, you're living in my home. These are my rules. Now, this is how you prepare to get out of the house. Because, you know, I have a sister that's still at home. And she has to understand that, hey, this is not my home. I do have to buy by their rules. Because think about it. You really are the beneficiary of, of this exchange. 
Right. You're staying there. You're not paying any rent. And if she is paying something, it's way below what you would be normally paying, um, right. paying to anyone else. So it's a mind thing. As right. a young person, you got to think, hey, this is actually benefiting me. You have to weigh the pros and the cons. Right. And I did that. I was dumb. I was quick. I was like, nah. I was prideful. I was very like, nah, y'all not going to tell me what to do. This my phone. This my this. And you know what happened to them kids? Well, go ahead. And you can learn the hard way. Right. And that, and that some parents have to say, you know what? Because we all, we're fearful. We live in fear that we don't want to anything happen to our kids. Right. At the end of the day, we do have to give that to, if you, I believe in God, you have to give that to God and pray that God protect your kid. You know, and it is what it is. Whether you, whether you're over them like a, a helicopter or you're not. Either way, something happens to your kid right up under your nose, and you never know. That's, That's just true. how the That's devil true. operates. That's true. Now I got some. I got some information here for you. Um, if you're born 1965 through 1980, that's Generation X. Okay. Now, for everybody who don't know this, I'm gonna give this to the whole, you know, internet world and YouTube that born. If you're born in 1981 to 1996, you consider millennials. So I'm a millennial. Okay. 1997 to 2012 is a Gen Z. Okay, that's Shanice. And then me, so me and Nini are considered millennials because she's right. born in 94. Right. So, and if you're born from 2013 to the present, 2025, which is next year, it's Gen Alpha. Wow, that's different. My daughter's not even in that generation. So she's right. with Shanice in the, uh, you said what, Z? So she was born in what? 11, 2011. So she a Gen Z. Oh, what's your Okay, okay. And Josiah, you know. Okay. And that's good to know. Um, it's just like knowing the differences. Okay, so what do what do Gen Z people do? What do millennials more likely do? Because I think it's a difference between some millennials too. If you was born in that first part of the millennial, you know, years, you're a little bit different mm -hmm. than the last, the ones. Because think about, you got to change. So that that beginning of it, the middle, towards the end, every everybody's changing, and and also depends what kind of a uh, home that you were brought up in. Because like a lot of like us, you know, like oh well, our parent or or even you guys, our parents struggle. I want my kids to have things that I didn't have, which right. is it. It's all sound good at first, but then when you start just giving, giving, giving. Those kids don't see a value in the, all the stuff that you're giving. You know, they become you know, spoiled, you know, mm -hmm. for lack of better um, words. And you gotta, you have to really turn quick from that. Right. Because now, you, you are, all parents want to do is see their kids happy. Right. Oh, I love, you know, but it, it doesn't make for a overall, overall good child. Right. It depends. It depends on the child. Right. So. And, 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 and you write about that definitely. Cause I, I, I'm always a believer of, you know, your child is the direct reflection of yourself, your parent. Is what I'm saying, you know, but, you know, as, as far as, and, and like you said, no manual for but the Bible or for whoever believe it or don't believe it, you just have to just be a good role model for your kids as well. You know, um, I've always was a big person on not trying to be your kids friends because from, from most of the time, I don't think that works, you know, because kids don't understand how to turn that on and turn that off. So if you're trying to correct them and you and them out there doing things together, that's 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 hard. That's hard to do because a lot of times younger kids, younger folk can't uh, separate that. So I think you shooting yourself in the foot by doing that's a big disadvantage. So you want to, as a parent, you want to always be up here and have your kids down here. That way, that's where that's where the respect going to come in at because if you don't. Put that first. You're not. You're not gonna get no respect. I don't. That's just my opinion. You're not gonna get no respect. It's a good foundational stage, but then also you gotta learn how to pivot. Cause while they're right. changing, you know, oh, I'm not heard, and no one think I'm important. Cause everybody goes to that stage of their looks, mm -hmm. how they feel. Yep. So then you gotta know how to pivot as a parent. Now you gotta come into all right. Telling them words of affirmations. Hey, you are beautiful. Right. We all go through right. our 
our things where we think we don't think as high of ourselves, mm. but it's okay because this is a growing moment. Mm. And that's hard. I have a teenage daughter and sometimes they don't even talk to you or you find out on the back end. And you're like, well, why wasn't you talking to me then? You know? Right. And, that's, and that's hard because um, a lot of people don't know how to reach out. But I think if you do that, you may can uh, prevent some things from happening. Because a lot of people don't want, want doing things and may not want the parent to know. But if you present yourself as a parent that's willing to help and an understanding parent, maybe they may come to you. I know when I was young, I never went to my father or my mother for nothing. Not nothing like that for help. I, I, I went to the streets or <laughs> my friends or older cousins or something like that. But never my parents. But why? Well, like, why do you think you never gave them that opportunity to actually parent you and to put that wisdom in you? Was it fear? Was it pride? Like, what do you think it was? Probably pride and thinking that I could figure it out. But when, but even with me, when I was a kid, I I didn't realize this till I got older that parents been through the same things. They they and you think they stupid? They've been through the same thing. It is just a different situation, a different environment, a different time. But mm-hmm. Like I always say, you know, the game never changed. People change. You know, the same thing that's going on in the 60s, 2024, it just right. may be a different form, but it's all the same. It's yeah. all the same. The way I look at it is I have knowledge to let you know what's going on before you even get there because I don't been there. You know what I mean? And that's where I look at things. And, and, a, and a person, some people may just think, oh, you can't tell me nothing. Let me learn on my own. Well, that, that's that's good. But that's also self destructing, I think. You know, because right. it's wrong with it. everybody gonna know everything. So there's nothing wrong with asking a question. That's what you go to school for. You can't just get a PhD and not go to school. Somebody gotta teach you things. You know what I mean? Each one, teach one. You know, everybody don't have the answers, and nobody knows everything. But it's somebody that can teach you what you need to know to get what you need to get. You just can't do that on your own. You can't. That's impossible. You know, you can't Google life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you got to have somebody that's, which you can, um, a mentor, somebody you can follow after and say, hey, wow, he, he doing good. She doing good. Let me see what's going on. What, what makes them, why they doing things? Or what, what's, um, why they life going so great? Not that. What they doing is good for you, but you make and take something that they're doing and and, and um implement it into what you're doing in your life, you know. Because if not, people are gonna be just walking around here aimlessly. But that's why it's and good for not, not having not have have an idea what they're doing. Yeah, huh? and adults, adults need to learn how to get into that mentorship role, not just in your own household, but out of your household. Because sometimes, with, like, because we're talking about our kids. Right. Sometimes our kids will see us differently when we interact with mm-hmm. other children or mm-hmm. other adults. That's how they really learning. They right. really learning sometimes not from you directly talking to them, but from them looking at you doing like actually going through life. Right. Um, so like, you know, sometimes I during uh, my coaching, I feel as though, you know, my daughter will look at me differently because she's like, oh. Look, she didn't just go be yelling at me. She'd right, be yelling right. at all of us. <laughs> but it's about what the words that, you know, that she's saying or you know, like she tell me that same thing. Right. So maybe they'll get a different look at it because now they see me talking to somebody else in the same way. Right. You know, it's correction. Not everybody, you know, it's not judgment. Everybody's quick to use that word loosely. Oh, you're right. judging me. Now nah, it's called correction. And I tell my girls, if no one's correcting you, then they don't really love you. Right. They, you have to, and you have to, in return, accept the correction. Sometimes you may feel uh, like down on yourself, like, dang, this person getting on to me. But right. it's okay. Sometimes you just need to be quiet. Because we, every time you have a need to say something back, mm-hmm. you're not letting it sink in. Sometimes you just got to be quiet and let it sink in. Now, I'm right. 35. Oh, and I'm still learning that. Sometimes you gotta let it sink in and be quiet. Not not every time you need to say something. Right, um, right. It always is a time for everything. Yeah, you know, it's people, a time and, for everything. You, and you gonna keep learning it all your life. Some people. That's right. Do, that's right. 
then, then later, what my sister close to me, she's definitely got it sooner than later. You're like, she picks up and learns quickly, you mm-hmm. know? So, you know, I, I just because I'm the oldest, that don't mean, oh, I, I lead in every position. No, I have to, now me being the oldest, I have to learn, okay, she's good in this. She's good in this. And he is good at this. And you kind of have to step back. And let them do their thing. So, so, like you said, we can't hawk over them. Sometimes we gotta let them. But let me see what choice they're gonna make. Right. You know, yeah. and then come and then come at it as a teachable moment. But sometimes we always like thinking like, I don't know, we're too quick to jump on them. Mm-hmm. I, I was listening to something because uh, I'm trying to be better at coaching. You know, I'm I'm everywhere with coaching. So one uh, video I was watching it was saying sometimes you can't correct everything. Right, right. I am. I'm trying to correct everything. Oh, you didn't do this right. You didn't do this. But sometimes you got to let the game come to them. And that's, that's just for life. Sometimes you got to let, they going to have to learn how to roll with the punches. You can't make them roll with the punches. You have to let them learn. Like, dang, that was a hit. Like, let me, next time, let me roll outside, you know? Right, right. They got to see it for themselves. Exactly. And, and that's kind of kind of how coach and lifing uh, is kind of like you, they say you should use life experiences and how this is going to teach you in life because everybody ain't going to make it to the league. Some, that's what some people think sometimes when they play in a sport. Oh, I'm going to go. I'm going to be practicing. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to the league. Like that's everybody's like number one go. But they don't right, see like right. oh, I'm doing this to build relationships, to build teamwork. They're not thinking at the smaller things. They're always thinking here first instead of looking at the groundwork. And then what we learned about business or building something, it's the foundation that's actually really strong and right, everything right. that goes with it. And we just look at, oh, that's such a great building. Look from the top and then start looking at everything in between. But if you actually look at that foundation, that's what's really important. A lot of people can't see the foundation sometimes because it's nay. You got to get to know somebody. You got to kind of put in the work to to see someone's foundation. Mm -hmm. So that's very hard, you know. But people, it takes time. Everybody do want everything quick, quick, quick. But it takes. They want they want instant gratification. Yeah, yeah. It takes a a while. Sometimes it may not come when you expect it. Sometimes it hits you like wow. You know, I was waiting on this, but things don't it, actually come it, when you want to come. It's going to gonna come when it's beneficial to you. Right. And that's why it pays to be different. But people don't see that's what I'm saying. It, look, no, it's an investment to be different. Right. Not, right. not going to get that instant gratification. But if you're being different, you're going to see it pay off in different ways throughout your life. How, right. you know, wow, I stayed away from that because. You know, it took me down this path instead of this path. And you and you'll see, you'll see other people choosing those things. And you say, Man, I'm glad I didn't do that. Cause I probably would have been doing the same thing. Cause right. we'd be thinking, Oh, I, I'm just better than that person. No, God kept you, or you just chose slightly different. I don't know why I keep going in and out now. Me but, neither. Me neither. Is that, 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 is that on your end or Yes, made my I got that focus on my face. I think I'm moving a little bit too much. So let me kind of stay still so it don't do that. Right. But, I mean, um, this you know we're gonna we're gonna use this because this this is definitely some good information. And this is me getting started. Once again, I'm telling everybody my name is Larry, but you know I, my name, my YouTube channel is Gab with Yab. You guys can uh, like, subscribe, and hit that button to follow me. And we got I have a lot of content going on. Definitely like, subscribe, and hit that button because I'm going to be coming at you guys again. And I normally come at you guys another way, but this platform is something different because it's easier to come with a platform like this versus going around finding people be sitting down and make making a, um, a, a podcast set. This is something I'm going to be doing. And, uh, hey, if Shannon Shop can do it, so can I, right? <laughs> you know, so, I mean, I'm not going to let him take all the joy. I want something to. And get your piece of the pie. That's right. That's right. That's right. I always say it's a big pile. This, so I got a piece. Everybody got a slice. You know what I mean. So we can we can do what we need to do, and and and, and it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Because this is definitely a hobby for me. But I'm trying to be serious with it. And hey, you never know. But my thing is trying to bring a positive message to everybody out here, and hopefully they can get some out of. It. You know, so but that's good. I appreciate you talking to me and everything like that. And uh, hopefully you can have success with your coaching and your kids and everything like that. Just that, you know, I'm, I'm here for y'all. I hear you.
All right. All right. Peace. All right. Take it easy, and we we we'll talk to you again. Peace. All right. Bye.